Okay, welcome back. We're up to part three now of our lecture about wind turbines. And remember I said that there were two types of wind turbines that we're going to be interested in. The horizontal axis wind turbines and the vertical axis wind turbines. And let's spend a few minutes talking about some of the advantages and disadvantages of different designs we could have for hot systems. Broadly speaking, there's two main ways we could set them up. We could configure them to be upwind facing, where the rotor is facing is upwind of the tower. Or we could fit, configure them to be downwind facing, where the where the rotor is downwind of the tower. All right, so well, they kind of work the way you think they would. I mean, here's a little schematic diagram of an upwind facing hot system, and you can see how the wind is coming in from the left, and the rotor itself, the blades and the hub and so on, are upwind of the tower. And as it happens, almost all available hot systems are in fact upwind facing. There are a number of key advantages to both upwind and downwind facing, but it turns out for most applications, upwind facing is the solution that you want, and that's because it has one really big advantage. Those upwind facing systems, the, the, the rotor, the plane of the rotor, the vertical plane that the rotor is sweeping through, is upwind of this obstacle to the flow, namely the tower. And so in general, the, the rotor itself is capturing winds at a higher speed since the structure of the turbine and the tower has a minimal effect upwind of the turbine compared to downwind of the turbine. These things can be built to be really, really big. Uh, this is a schematic diagram of the currently largest commercially manufactured uh, upwind facing horizontal axis wind turbine and each individual blade of the turbine is right around 80 meters long. Uh, you can see that compared to an Airbus 320 over there, or 380 rather. Uh, this thing is huge. The whole area that it sweeps through is about 154 meters across. Uh, I didn't do the math as to what the what the uh, what the cross sectional area of it is sweeping through, but obviously this is capturing enormous amounts of kinetic energy as the as the uh, turbine is sweeping through this very large area. But we're going to have this challenge that we're going to have to keep an upwind facing, well, really all horizontal um, axis wind turbines have to be kept facing upwind. And in order to do that, we're going to have to have some mechanism to control the yaw. Yaw, that's an important word. Yaw is its orientation around its vertical axis. You can have, it can yaw to the right, it can yaw to the left. Yaw is how it turns with respect to a vertical axis. Um, if, if it's a fairly small wind turbine, uh, a tail fin might be adequate to do the job. In fact, that is typically what's done for like small wind turbines like that might provide demonstration power to a school or on a home for somebody who's trying to earn green energy credits or something like that. That is an example of what we call passive yaw control. The wind turbine is being kept pointing in a particular direction just by the tail itself. The tail itself experiences forces in much the same way when we learned about a wind vane, how when the, as the wind direction changes, the, the vane will experience forces on the left or right side of the vane, which will keep it facing upwind. And that's exactly what's going on here with this wind turbine. They are getting passive uh, yaw control just using the tail. And this works great for small turbines. I like the example, for example, of just an ordinary farm windmill that's pumping water. There's no mechanics or anything like that keeping this thing facing upwind. It's passive yaw control. The thing is just continually for facing upwind based on just the aerodynamics of its tail, of its vane. Um, we have to limit this, though, to fairly small wind turbines because if the Wind turbine, if there's any error, oh, the right word for that is yaw error. If there's any error and the wind turbine is not faced directly upwind, there's quite a lot of torque on the works of the windmill. And that greatly limits the lifespan of a turbine. Now, in the case of something like a farm windmill, it's not that high, it's not experiencing that strong of winds. It can pivot fairly quickly because it's not that big. As a consequence, it doesn't experience just too detrimental of yaw error. But if we were talking about something like that giant wind turbine that was as big as a Airbus 380, well now we've got a problem because even a small yaw error where 
we aren't facing uh, the, the direction upwind, we're going to get a very large torque on the blades associated with the fact that we have a yaw error. So larger wind turbines are actually going to need a more sophisticated, computer-driven, motor-driven mechanism that's going to keep the thing very accurately facing upwind. And that is a type of active yaw control, where we're actually going to use sensors and computers and motors to actively keep the wind turbine facing upwind. There the yaw mechanism, to use the correct vocabulary word, will actually be driven by motors and computers and sensors and so on to maintain active yaw control. Um, if we actually try to, we're going to actually see some examples of like how all that works in just a little bit. But before we go into like the details of like looking at all the parts that are in uh, a wind turbine, let's actually hit the quick uh, topic real quick of the downwind facing hots. Uh, so like for example here we have a diagram where we're seeing the winds again going from left to right. And you can see how there is a wind turbine there and it's clearly got its rotor on the downwind side. This again is a less common technology. Uh, just to use a, uh, a quote I could not improve upon when I was uh, looking these things up online, it said, downwind machines have a, the rotor placed on the lee side of the tower and they have the theoretical advantage that they could be built without any kind of yaw mechanism. If the rotor and the nacelle have a suitable design that makes the nacelle follow the wind passively. Just so we know the nacelle is going to be that kind of that mechanism at the top of the tower where all the works are. If your nacelle can kind of serve as like an upwind tail for the downwind facing hot, you actually have a, an advantage here. On the other hand, how good is this going to work? Um, I mean, they would have to be really quite careful and quite accurate to make sure that that nacelle, that that little area up there at the top that contains all that, would have to have pretty good dynamics to keep it facing the right direction. Boy, I'd rather have a tail. I'd rather do this upwind anyway. Um, now, we're going to actually come across this problem. Again, I rearranged some of these slides, so um, we have a little bit of vocabulary here we haven't seen before. But without this active yaw control, if we're just going to let this thing face downwind and just let the wind push it back and forth, like a windmill would be, except windmills face upwind, like a farm, like a water windmill, uh, where it's pumping water. Um, with, you're going to start running into problems about twisting of cables. Uh, we're going to see more about that in the next module, uh, the next part of this lecture here. But if you're just going to be allowing your electricity generating wind turbine to just turn to yaw to the left and the right, however it needs to, the problem is with time, it will tend to yaw more one direction than the other as weather systems pass, and so you'll have yawed complete rotations. Now, the works of the generator and so on that are up in the nacelle are connected with these big thick cables down to the ground, but as this thing has rotated, you've now made a twist in those cables. If the whole thing is just passively yaw controlled, how are you going to get that thing to go the other way and untangle those cords? At least if you had active yaw control, you could use the motors and stuff every now and then to turn the thing forcibly, turn it the other way around to untangle the cords. But we'll see more about that in just a little bit. Before we do, let's actually take a few minutes to answer a couple quick questions about what we've just seen in part three. An old-fashioned windmill that pumps drinking water on a farm uses blank yaw control. Is that passive or active? How does it continue facing upwind on an old-fashioned water uh, pumping windmill? Like the kind of old Dr. Shroggy had on the farm when he was growing up? Make a choice from your two options and get a little feedback before you go on to question eight.